is a rather hostile country for women. It's become a taboo and therefore dangerous to call oneself a feminist or even express feminist values. There are radical feminist groups that are fueled by outrageous and ridiculous arguments, not unlike fascist parties in Europe. Hello, I'm Annette Young, the host of The 51%, and in this week's special edition, we're coming to you from the South Korean capital of Seoul. This Asian economic powerhouse may be the world's 13th largest economy, but paradoxically, when it comes to women's rights, it lags way behind other nations, according to the World Economic Forum. And under the current ultra-conservative government, feminism has not only become a dirty word, but a dangerous one too. Beck Gaio was getting ready to leave her apartment. But the lack of makeup and short hair is already making a radical statement in this traditional society. In a city that's also the global capital of plastic surgery, her appearance alone says she's a proud feminist. Korean women work so hard to look good. There's pressure to have long hair, wear makeup at work, be a certain weight, follow the latest fashion trends, and change hairstyles. A lot of money goes into this. Bek Gaiul identifies herself with South Korea's radical 4B movement whose members vow not to have sex with men, get married or have children with them. The 4B movement is essentially about refusing to make an effort to look good, so as to not be an object of sexual desire. The 32-year-old activist made the extreme move after researching sex crimes online, a massive problem in this traditional Asian society. Pornography is banned in South Korea, so in a nation which is a global leader in high-tech, it's very easy to capture voyeuristic images of women with the use of hidden cameras, which is what these workers are searching for. It's called Molka and is everywhere, even in these public toilets in the metro, as warning signs reveal. And prosecution of these crimes is very low. Many Korean men consume this so-called domestic porn and every woman is scared of becoming a victim of illegal filming. This is our reality. When you see this, how can you trust your fellow citizens or your partner in this society? Bek Gaiol is also a publisher of a feminist magazine, She's meeting a fellow contributor who asked not to be identified since being outed as a feminist could result in losing her job. It's hard to believe, but even having short hair can make you a target in this country. Just recently, the video of a brutal assault on a female sales assistant by a man on the grounds he thought she was a feminist made headlines. It's highly risky to be a feminist. Since joining the movement, I've cut my hair short. And in Korea, having short hair as a woman is a sort of indication that you're a feminist. I've received hostile glances from men in the metro. And one man even bumped my shoulder as he walked past. So we're having to deal with these kind of physical threats as well. I've also experienced this kind of abuse online, such as countless rape threats when I express my opinions. For three years running, South Korea has recorded the lowest fertility rate in the world, with women of reproductive age having fewer than one child on average. It's been dubbed the birth strike and is mainly due to women facing strong pressures to give up their careers after childbirth. Back at the cafe and overhearing our conversation with Beck Gaiol is cafe owner Kim Gina, who explains the palpable anger among her peers. 
is the reaction to the Korean society, how Korean society treat us, and then is to not have children. Yes, and our reaction is uh, not giving them, <laughs> not producing our future. To the outside world, South Korea is the paradigm of ultra-modernity, an image reinforced by its K-pop bands and cinema. Yet the statistics tell a completely different story. For instance, it has the worst gender pay gap among OECD countries. Yun Ji San is a professor of philosophy who's written about the backlash against women's rights. The women's rights movement has surged among women in their 20s and 30s in recent years. And men who felt somewhat threatened by this have retaliated with an anti-feminist movement. Many politicians instrumentalized this in the 2022 presidential election to appeal to male voters. And one could argue that this is how anti-feminism became a mainstream sentiment. It's become very apparent that to be a feminist in 2023 in South Korea has indeed become dangerous. It's become a taboo and therefore dangerous to call oneself a feminist or even express feminist values. So many women are remaining silent for now. But I believe that despite all this, we'll be able to restart the conversations and make policy demands for better women's rights. I'm meeting Lee Han, who's a true rarity in South Korea, a man who proudly calls himself a feminist. Men of my generation who are interested in feminism are a tiny minority. Han became interested in women's rights during the rise of the Me Too movement in South Korea in 2018, which saw a number of high-profile men, including politicians and pop stars, facing prosecution. I give a lot of lectures in the military and in boys' schools. And particularly in the classroom, I often see many kids using language that is misogynistic, stuff they've seen on YouTube or elsewhere. Now, it's not hard to debate them, but what I found most difficult was having to repeat myself over and over again to break down the walls, which all goes back to square one, when a politician makes a comment that adds fuel to the fire. Divisions in a country already split by the Korean War 70 years ago. Fears over its highly erratic militaristic neighbour means almost 350,000 South Korean young men each year face 18 months compulsory military service. But women are exempt, effectively giving them a head start in their careers. And all of this playing into the hands of anti-feminists, such as its current president, Yong suk yeol I think this is a great victory for the people of South Korea. The ultra-conservative leader is wanting to abolish the Gender Equality Ministry while seeking to increase penalties for those who make false accusations about rape or sexual assault. An advisor to the ruling People Power Party, Jang Ye Chan, denies the government has created a dangerous environment for women's rights activists. I feel there needs to be a different approach to the different types of feminism. Because there are radical feminist groups that are fueled by outrageous and ridiculous arguments, not unlike fascist parties in Europe. For example, using hate speech against father figures in a family, or fanning the flames of gender tensions. The government draws the line at what's acceptable or not, 
rather than giving into political correctness and allowing ourselves to be dictated by these voices. But I don't believe that us doing so poses a threat to feminists. But it does seem that the debate in this country has become incredibly polarised. The frustration and anger of young men in this country, whether their opinion is right or wrong, is palpable. This is very worrying. If everyone just argues their own point of view, this simmering anger online among the youth could surface and boil over in society, which could result in serious incidents, unlike anything ever before seen in Korea. Society needs to have conversations as a whole to ease these tensions, and not jump to saying things like feminists are right, men are wrong. This will do nothing to help the frustration and the anger amongst the youth. Jo In Hee is out for a stroll with her nine month old son, Wuju. It's an image the government would like to see more of. But she is one of the few mothers in her neighbourhood, and even rarer, a working mother at that. <laughs> I only have one friend who's had her baby a year before me. The rest of my friends are married, but either don't want to have a baby or want to wait until their 40s for the sake of their career. In a society once steeped in Confucianism, a woman was called on to submit to her husband while taking care of the family. Yet Yin He, a part-time model, and her marketing executive partner, Yung Sang, are breaking with tradition as they attempt to share parental responsibilities, both agreeing on the need for greater equality. Will you raise your son as a feminist? I hope my son will be a feminist. It's up to him to decide for himself. But I think having that awareness is definitely a good thing, because it will allow him to have a better understanding of the world around us. So yes, I would like him to be a feminist. In fact, this couple's approach might actually serve as a role model for a society that's having so much difficulty in balancing women's rights with the urgent need to increase its birth rate.